As the realms of the Seven Kingdoms continue to vie with each other for power and control, these struggles often turn violent, and the outcome is often determined by the size and strength of their armies. Supporting these forces requires vast supply routes and money for wages. It is therefore left to the lords of the various realms to cultivate the resources of their lands and establish profitable trading routes in order to pay for their campaigns of war. Though the North is home to great warriors and honorable lords, it is one of the poorest territories of Westeros, with the snows and cold weather making agricultural production quite difficult, yet they are not completely without resources. The North is a great provider of timber to the realms of Westeros and beyond, even producing ironwood, famed for its strength and durability. The houses of the North are also known as producers of wool, as well as furs and hides, and the port city of White Harbor is said to sit atop a great number of silver mines. As a result, the city itself is home to master silversmiths whose work is famed throughout Westeros. Because of the great wealth of White Harbor, House Manderley has become one of the richest families of the North, possibly second only to the Starks. The lack of roads and vast distances between towns makes inland trade difficult, meaning the small folk of these lands often live in extreme poverty. Located at the center of the continent, the Riverlands has become a profitable trade hub for the realms of Westeros. In times of peace, the many rivers and waterways of the territory are used to transport goods between the many neighboring realms. The Riverlands themselves are able to produce a fair amount of grain from their fertile fields and are also known to produce wine. Yet these same attributes which allow them to thrive in times of peace doom them in times of war, with neighboring realms able to easily raid and pillage Riverland villages. And even when they are not the direct target, armies often need to pass through the Riverlands to reach other realms, leading to raids of nearby lands to sustain their forces. The port city of Saltpans often trades with the free cities, though it is one of the least populous ports in the continent. The territory of the Vale at first glance does not seem like a rich and profitable territory, with its vast mountainous ranges and dangerous roving mountain clans. Yet upon closer examination, we discover the Vale is one of the most fertile territories in Westeros, possibly even matching the fertility of territories in the Reach. It is said wheat, corn, barley, pumpkins, and other fruits grow in the Vale, in great quantities and of top quality. House Waxley of Wickenden is even known to produce exotic scented candles, sometimes scented with nutmeg and other expensive spices. The port city of Gulltown has grown rich from its strategic location as a trade harbor between the North, Bravos, the Vale, and King's Landing. And with this great wealth, it is no wonder the Vale lords of years past were able to construct the great fortress of the Eyrie. Though the houses of the Vale and small folk benefit greatly from their resources, and wealth. The mountain clans, described as descendants from the first men who refused to bow to Andal kings, suffer greatly, refusing to participate in the local economy, and thereby surviving off petty theft and raiding. The richest realm of the Seven Kingdoms is without doubt the Westerlands. Though their lands are quite fertile, producing many crops, they are nowhere near as lush as the Reach or the Vale. It is therefore from the mines of the Westerlands, spread throughout their many hills, that the realm finds its true wealth. Gold and silver mines abound in the territory, with gold mines found at the Golden Tooth, Casterly Rock, Castamere, Nuns Deep, and the Pendrick Hills. Lannisport and Fair Isle also engage heavily in sea trade and fisheries, with Lannisport as one of the most active and prosperous harbors in the continent. The vast wealth of this territory has led House Lannister to become the richest non-royal family in the realm, even becoming a major money lender to the Iron Throne, possibly lending up to three million gold dragons during the reign of King Robert I. The Iron Islands, small rocky lands devoid of fertile fields and pastures, have largely based their economies around fisheries and sea trade, as well as trading in iron ore which is found in abundance in the mines beneath the islands. Aside from iron, they also produce tin and lead. Yet the work is dangerous and difficult, often left to the lowest levels of society. Instead, most turn to raiding to make up for their lack of resources. Historians claim it was a lack of timber that originally drove the ironborn from their homes to pillage their neighbors and plunder their goods. The iron born found this way of life so profitable, they centered all their culture and traditions around reaving, with their leaders in House Greyjoy even taking the words, we do not sow, as a testament to their raiding ways. The Reach is the most fertile territory of Westeros, growing many of the finest fruits and grains in the continent. They are known for their cultivation of melons, fire plums, peaches, apples, grapes, and pumpkins. They are also known for making dry fruity red wines, sweet wines, and rich golden vintages, such as Arbor Gold. Before the conquest of the Targaryens, the Reach had their own coinage system with golden hands, some of which still exist today and have the value of roughly half a gold dragon. The Reach is also home to the market towns of Ashford and Tumbleton, 
Hampton, which do a great deal of inland trading, as well as Old Town, a large port city, home of House Hightower, and the Maesters of the Citadel, the oldest city in Westeros. It is for this reason House Tyrell of Highgarden have made their words, growing strong, to symbolize their territory's wealth of resources, suggesting that while others concern themselves with war, the Reach is concerned with the prosperity of their people. Though the Crown Lands are one of the smallest territories in the kingdom, the capital city of King's Landing is the largest port city and trade hub in the continent, with merchants and traders from all over the world gathering to buy and sell. The Crown Lands therefore have great wealth and a great variety of artisans and skilled laborers. Yet outside the capital, the towns and villages of the realm are more agriculturally dependent. One of the poorer realms of Westeros, the Stormlands, with their constant rains and storms, have relatively fertile fields, but their strong martial traditions have allowed for no major cities to develop. Instead, Stormlords build great fortresses such as Storm's End and supply these forts with the labor and harvests of surrounding villages. Though the seas along the territory, especially around Shipbreaker Bay, are difficult to navigate with their storms, the port city of Weeping Town is able to prosper greatly through the Sea of Dorne, trading with many of the free cities. One of the richer territories in Westeros, Dorne is home to a number of exotic and highly prized goods sought after by many in Westeros and the Free Cities. They are known for their production of lemons, olives, pomegranates, and wine, producing strong wine and Dornish sour reds. The southern lands are also known for their breeding of specialized horses called sand steeds, who are swift and eat little. It is said they can run for nearly two days straight without tiring. The port city of Plankytown has done very well, serving as a trade hub for Volantis and many of the other free cities, even seeing trade from the Summer Isles and Far East, providing a passage into Westerosi markets. 